Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my top five tips for laser engraving wood. Welcome back. The first tip that I'm going to share with you is something that I'm sure all of you are familiar with and that is crosshatch engraving. Typically we use this to get a very nice deep and very complete engraving, but I'm going to show you how I shake up my settings to create some really neat looks while saving time at the same time. Let's head into the computer and check out this first tip. On the screen, I have the simple word wood for our wood engraving. And when I double click on this layer, we're going to see that I have crosshatch enabled and I'm at a 45 degree scan angle. But what's really interesting is instead of engraving at 250 to 350 lines per inch, I've turned the lines per inch all the way down to 20. This means we're going to definitely be able to visually see the crosshatch pattern of this engraving. We can get a better look at what that will look like by checking out the preview button. And we'll zoom in and check that out. A completely different look. One thing that I see is that all the ends of our text or the outside and inside are all these open squares and I really don't like that. So what I'm going to do is highlight my text and control C to copy and control V to paste that. And I'm going to put that copied uh, text on a different layer on this red layer and I'm going to switch that over to line and what I'm going to do is that line engraving with the same settings as the crosshatch engraving. And I can grab this and place it directly over the top and once again when I hit the preview button now we're going to see that all these letters are enclosed and I think that really pops out. Let's hit the start button and see what this engraving looks like. Clean crisp engraving lines with the X-Tool D1 Pro. This crosshatch pattern is a great way to spice up any project. My next tip is going to be adding a splash of color to the project. For this, I'm going to be using some iron lac spray paint and I've got another piece of sample wood material and I'm going to be laser cutting a mask to go on my work material. The mask material is going to be simple black construction paper and to get the construction paper to stick to my work material, I have some 3M general purpose 45 spray adhesive. And the key here is to spray a very light coating on this construction paper and giving it one to two minutes of open drying time. This will still allow the paper to be tacky enough to stick to my work material and I'll still be able to pull my mask material off, revealing our cool spray paint design underneath. Let's check out inside Lightburn some of the settings that I'm using for this next tip. I'm using the same text as before, and for the word wood, I'm going to be doing a simple line engraving with a fast speed of 100 millimeters per second and a power level of 60%. Once this is done cutting out, all I need to do is pluck out all of the letters, allowing me to move on to the next step and paint in some beautiful color on this sample piece of wood. The next tip that I have is going to shy away from color and actually move towards black, but not just any black, a bold, rich black color. 
The secret ingredient for this is going to be borax soap. I've used this in the past where I've measured out a portion of room temperature water to uh, portions of the borax soap. Since then, I've simplified this process of just add soap to that room temperature water until the water no longer absorbs any more of this soap. I then add a little bit more of the soap so that I've got standing soap crystals at the bottom of my container. I then heat up that container and that will allow the rest of the soap to dissolve into the water, creating a super saturated solution. I really do need to have that much soap in the water for this process to work. From that point, I'll take my wood sample or my project material and if this is small enough to fit into that container of the super saturated solution, I'll simply dunk this into that solution for one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then I'll remove my wood sample out, kind of shake it dry a little bit. But I do want to have standing uh, water on the surface on both sides, allowing it to soak and penetrate into the wood. Now, of course, if my wood doesn't fit inside the container, I can certainly take something like a nice paintbrush and liberally apply the soap solution again to both sides of my wood. This really does need to dry overnight. If there's any moisture left over in the wood, when I go to laser the wood, I'm gonna get a lot of steam and moisture coming out of it, and that doesn't work so well with the laser. I prepared my sample yesterday, and I'm ready to place that in the work area, and let's check out some of the settings in Lightburn software. Keeping things simple, I have the same text as before, and we're going to see that I'm now set to fill. And I'll double click on this layer, and we're going to check out some of the settings. I've increased the speed, I've lowered the overall power, and my lines per inch remains at about 300. Part of this process of getting this jet black engraving, it's not so much about graving into the wood as it is just hitting something kind of near the surface. What we're looking for is the reaction of the laser to the borax soap that is in the wood material. From here, I'll align my work material up to the laser head and we'll see what this jet black engraving looks like. When using the borax solution method, I recommend finishing the project off with a nice spray polyurethane or a nice high quality brush on finish. This will eliminate the smudging of that borax engraving. This type of method is still something that I use to this day. The other week, I made a nice borax solution engraving to make this piece of hanging wall art. For the next step, I'm going to move away from graphics and simple text and move on to one of the more complicated or more frustrating things that we could work on and that is photo engraving. My tips for engraving photos, it's going to be more of a handful of things that you could use to help get better success and some things to kind of shy away from. I wish that I had just only one tip to use, but because there's so many different power levels of laser modules and different power levels or speeds of the controller boards, these things have a big impact on what settings a person would use when engraving a photo. Another key thing to consider is the type of wood that's being used. I highly recommend a tight grained wood that has a uniform wood grain to it. One of the examples that I have here is a nice piece of birch plywood. This I cut down from a larger handy panel that can be found at most hardware stores. I also recommend getting a piece of wood that is very bright, as almost close to white as you can possibly get. And when I take a look at this birch plywood, it looks like it's nearly white until I take a nice laser quality bass plywood and put that next to it and we'll see that the bass wood is much brighter. And when we take a close up look, we're going to see that the bass plywood has a very even, very tight wood grain and the wood grain between 
the, the summer grain and the winter grain, there's not that much of a difference, making it a great candidate for photo engraving. One of the woods that I'd maybe not recommend would be this piece of red oak. Oak is typically going to have three distinct different colors to it, and it oftentimes has some really nice bold wood grain to it, which is great for woodworking projects, but when we're trying to use it as a canvas for engraving a photo on, that multicolor wood grain along with the bold structure of that wood grain tends to kind of compete with the photo that we're trying to engrave. Inside Lightburn, there's gonna be a multitude of different options we have when engraving an image. Let's take a look at that right now. We're going to see that under image mode, there's a whole bunch of different variations that we can use to engrave photo quality images. My top three that I like to use are Grayscale, Jarvis, and in today's case, Stucky. We're also going to see that I reduced my DPI down a little bit. While I wish I could share with you one magical setting that would produce perfect photo engravings every time, what I can offer is the trifecta of variables that I think are going to help get you better success with your photo engravings. And again, those are going to be the actual photo that's being engraved, the type of wood being used, and the editing applied towards that photo. Inside of that trifecta is going to be the settings within Lightburn software. My last wood engraving tip, and I think the best tip in this whole video, is how to clean up that wood smoke residue. For this, my go-to product is LA's Totally Awesome. This stuff just melts smoke residue off of any wood project. When using LA's Totally Awesome, I first make sure that I have a source of some warm water, whether it's from a sink or in a bucket of water. I'll then take the spray bottle and I'll start saturating my project down. And if I did a cutout, I'll even spray the outside cut edge. From there, I'll rub my fingers into the engraving or on the outside of that cutout. And then I'm going to immediately start rinsing off that cleaning solution with that warm water. Once that solution is washed off, I go to a clean, dry towel and I wanna get all of that water off of my wood project. That way the wood doesn't absorb the water and start to swell up. This is a method that I've been using for a very long time and it works on every wood engraving that I do. Thanks for watching today's video on my top five tips for engraving wood. There's certainly many more out there, and if you think that I forgot one that's really important or you'd like to share one of your tips, feel free to leave a comment down below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help the laser channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect content like this with other great people just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.